Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to another episode of the Minecraft Redstone Guide. Today is a pretty short episode, actually, hopefully. Um, it's just going to go over a couple of things with pistons. So, uh, pistons uh, have been a great impact on the redstone circuitry part of Minecraft. A lot of things have uh, changed with redstone which allow for a lot more smaller circuits and so on just because of these cool little pistons. So as you can see this simple thing right here just activates this lever. All it does is it pushes a block on top of the redstone torch and as we know already the redstone torch will power give a direct power to the block which will also give indirect power to this block. So push it down and yeah it updates. So that's pretty cool. We can do all sorts of cool things with uh, pistons. Uh, we're only going to go over a few things today, not all of them. There will be links in the description if you do wish to check out some more things. But uh, today, let's go over a few basic things. So this one here is a 1x1 one one vertical t uh, tower downwards. That, so this is a good way of sending power downwards. So we flip this lever, and that light turns on. I flip it off, it turns off. All the way down, and pretty cool, pretty cool. Uh, these are pretty cool and I'll just show you guys how it works so these are redstone blocks that were added with the 1.5 redstone update now if you don't know what these things do uh, let's just grab one so redstone blocks always provide a power so you can see right there we place something like right there it provides indirect power around it so you can see right there that you know it doesn't power all the way through which sh I showed you guys that in the uh, power episode so as soon as the redstone block goes on top of the redstone torch, it's going to power this block, which is going to power the piston, which is going to set off a chain reaction all the way down. So that's pretty cool. And as you can see, what's really cool is when you there's no delay when you turn it off. So we flip this on, and there's a little chain reaction with the pistons, if you heard that. Um, let's turn it off. And you can kind of see them, that they kind of fire in a chain reaction pattern. But when we flip it off, they all sim simultaneously activate, which is a good way for doing things like uh, instant repeaters, which we're not going to cover in today's episode, but um, yeah, instant repeaters are pretty cool. So if you are interested in them, it's a way of repeating a signal that is instant. So those are pretty cool. There will be some links in the description to some cool ones if you do wish to check them out. Some other things with pistons, uh, we saw before in some of our timing circuit trees that we use the piston and basically it powers this block and sends a signal through but at the same time it powers this block, the piston underneath will receive power and push it up and it sends a very short signal through. So that's pretty cool. Now the main thing people know about pistons, the main use for pistons are called uh, for buds. So these are called block update detectors. That's what buds stand for. I think there were some very early designs when, uh, oh, way back when. But uh, the bud became famous um, by Etho. Etho created a great one with using uh, water and a boat. And eventually w people found ones with pistons. And yes, it has evolved ever since. So this is how it works. Uh, this is a common bud where the piston is actually being powered diagonally and we provide a block update, like placing a block, it will activate. And we just flip that off, and turn it back on. So as soon as we turn that on, it's not act activating. It needs like a little update. So that's cool. Uh, that works for many things. A uh, good example is like a redstone ore. If we place that next to it and turn that on, um, maybe I should turn my, oh, my particles are on. We stand on that. There we are. Start sparkling, and that thing gets laid off. So those are very nice for some traps. So block update detectors are very cool. The, this can then go into your random circuit, I don't know. But anyways, uh, these here are automatic block update detectors. So as you can see, this redstone dust is powering this block, which is therefore powering this piston diagonally. And this is what's going to set off this little reaction. So we push this button, or we place a block, and it sends a little pulse. And from that, we could have a little light, and we kind of know when there's a block in place. Using this you could open secret doors by placing blocks or breaking blocks or walking on top of a redstone ore. Let's do that again. There we are. Pretty cool. Uh, 
Now, this kind of method, it kind of comes from the fact uh, with redstone torches. If I think this is how the bud came into play. If you had like a wall of sticky pistons, for example, all right, let's just create ourselves a basic wall of sticky pistons. Now, if we throw a redstone torch right here, it actually powers both of the pistons, and this would make wiring up a big wall of uh, sticky pistons a lot easier. Uh, so let's try and wire all of this up. And as you can see, all of them are powered, and all we need to do is run redstone dust right across there, and right across there, and that will power all the blocks, and therefore, you know, power everything up. So that would activate, and yeah, so that would make a very easy method of, um, you know, making piston walls. So yeah, I think that's where it came from. The idea, I'm not sure, I'm not 100% sure, but that's just my theory, at least. Alright, so that's pretty cool. And here's a, uh, kind of like a tea bud. People call this one a tea bud because you place a block, it activates, does nothing. But as you can see right here, now the piston is not being powered diagonally. It's not being powered in any way possible, but it's still activated. So as soon as we update again, it activates the bud. So it's kind of like a little toggle. This one makes a little pulse, while this one activates and deactivates. Pretty cool. Now, another cool thing about... Uh, oh, actually, I, I want to add on to the buds. There are other methods of making buds. Uh, I know Seth Bling made a nice video about buds and how to how there are different ways of doing them using the diagonally diagonal powered um, issue or using a different issue where the pistons push a block out at the same time of being powered and then they don't power. Yeah, so you can go check that out if you are really interested in that. But we're going to move on. All right, let's pick up that button. So this here is another example of what pistons can do. So we use them for like memory cells or piston tapes is what they, I think, usually refer to these as. So as you can see right here, this light is being activated. Push the button, it moves along. Push it again, it moves along. And we can push it basically all the way along. Oh no, something's messed up. Let's quickly fix it. Oh, great. Great. There's always something wrong. There we are. Alright, and let's try that out again. There we are, it's moving up. Ah oh, man. What a pain. Okay, now it should work fine. <laughs> uh, this didn't work out as planned, but it kind of works nevertheless. Uh, maybe you should use a different kind of thing instead of a red symbol. It's just because I was lazy and couldn't be bothered doing anything else, so that's why I used the redstone block. So that's how this pretty much works. It goes around in a circle almost, and messing up at times, but that's pretty cool. And that's what people use for memory. So, for example, you push a button, activate something. You push it again, and then it activates something else. Now I can't do it anymore because now this is all being powered and whatever. So yeah, uh, you could have it doing one thing, and then you push the button, it does something else, and then it, you can have basically a big loop of pistons, and it will trigger different outputs. So that's pretty cool. Just from one single but button, you can do all of that. You can also store um, memory in here too, and things like that. Um, for example, if we had these stacked by each other, actually, that's a very terrible example, we need one of these. Alright, so if you had pistons facing up, you could have uh, solid blocks here, and then maybe skip those. All right, and then when these are pushed up, like so, then you'll be able to send power through all of these. All right. All right, and then from there we can find out which ones are activated, and then we can use that to activate different things. For example, we could have it activate these pistons, but maybe not that. And then as things change, we might change it so this might be there and this might change, and then we have different outputs, all like that, and that, that can start toggling around and then as this, things change, the outputs change. So that's pretty cool. That's a, a also a cool use for pistons. 
another cool way is for um, more vertical wiring upwards like I showed you over there with the sticky pistons now this one it pushes the sand block up and then it basically comes down so as soon as it pushes the sand block up it's going to like start a chain reaction and push all of them up here and as soon as this sand block reaches on top of here let's just grab one for example like that then this redstone torch powers the repeater and the repeater powers that block directly powers it and therefore it can send the power through like that and as soon as the piston retracts since the sand obeys the laws of gravity it will come back down all right so you can see right there it pushes up and then there's a little chain reaction to come that makes it come down now if you don't want to use all the sand because as you can see we have to wait for it to slowly fall back down which can be annoying uh, we could use something like this which is pretty cool so power the lever and then we unpower it and then pushes it back down so how this kind of works is we also works with a button by the way alright so it pushes the block up now as soon as it's up here there's a redstone block right there oops shouldn't have done that uh, but there's a block here our redstone block that redstone block's gonna you know give out your output so it could I don't know power piston power a lamp you know all of that stuff and it also goes into here and this is a little clock that will just tell the piston to keep firing but since the piston is already activated now if I can push all of this up then we will be good to go good all right and so as you can see right here it activates this clock it tells this piston to continue pushing this down because this redstone dust powering this block which is powering the piston it's also powering it diagonally too uh, actually it, I, I kind of is in some ways all right so since this piston is extended this piston can't actually push if you didn't know that about pistons pistons can't push downwards so as soon as we retract it the clock will fire off and push it down and since the redstone blocks not powering the clock anymore it will stop so that's pretty cool now another thing we're going to talk about today is hoppers. I don't have a lot of hopper um, stuff to talk to you guys about, but I'll give you guys a common example. This here is a hopper timer developed by Etho, and he made this really cool compact design, and we just flip the lever, and sometime later, what will happen is it will switch over, there we are, and it turns this off. And then a little while later, it will switch over again, and turn it back on. So all that, do, all that happens is items come back and forth through the hoppers and then they get sucked out. Pretty cool. So, you know, we're not going to go on, on about that for too long. Now this here is an item sorter. This is another common uh, hopper invention. Now the most common ho item sorter I've seen is this kind here. Very nice and simple. So what happens is you throw in your items here and now since comparators which we'll go over at a later stage. Actually, we'll go over them next episode, probably. Pretty cool. Um, so, yeah, we'll probably go over comparators next episode. But anyways, the comparators can uh, detect how many items there are in. And as this one here is 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. So it has 22 items. So as soon as it hits 23 items, uh, its signal strength will bump up to 2 which will then activate the repeater and therefore unpower this hopper which will allow items to be sucked uh, from this hopper and will be sent to your chest so uh, I've got some items here which we can sort out into the chest uh, we'll give that a little test try but I now want to show you guys another design that I came up with uh, there's a chance that someone else might have come up with this design if so I might put it in the description if I find one but this one here allows for the hoppers to continue tra traveling downwards. So as you can see from this design here, uh, you, you can see right there, there's an item stuck in it. And it can't go through because the hopper is being powered. So unfortunately, things are going to get stuck. And, you know, that's going to be a problem. You can, uh, however, f kind of fix it by filling up those with items that you probably never use. Uh, well, actually, it can't because, you know, it's an item sorter. Uh, boom. Oops, that's going to mess things up. There we are. Good enough. And, yeah, basically, 
uh, if this chest fills up completely with stuff, so for example, if this all fills up with redstone lamps, all right, that means nothing can pass through. And if we throw in some items there, it will get sucked through. But I can't go into here. Too many redstone lamps, so it's just going to get piled up through here. So unfortunately, that is a problem, and you can get up to 64 items stuck in there, and that's. Probably not a good thing if you're sorting out diamonds, but if you have that many diamonds, it doesn't really matter anyways. But, you know, it's a pretty cool design nevertheless. This design here, uh, it allows for the hoppers to become, come straight down, which means you can have it all nice and straight, which is very nice. You can even have the um, items come out here like so if you really want to, but you can get items sucked down from these hoppers, and this means that uh, you can always have items that come through. So even if this was all fooled up, it would all suck down, uh, you know, to the very end, which is very cool. Does require a little more space and a little more resources, but cool, nevertheless. All right, so let's see this item sword in action. It's just going to suck up some items, and since there are no um, dispensers and the hoppers, it can't pick it up except for uh, this chest here. So all the dispensers are coming here because that's the only place it can go. These hoppers underneath can't suck the um, so yeah. So hoppers are a little more difficult to explain and hopefully I did my best at trying to explain them. I might make another video on pistons and hoppers if you guys really want to. It does get a little more advanced but if you guys have any, any other creations or things you want to share, yeah feel free to uh, leave a comment about them or video response. I don't mind those. So yeah, that's it for today guys uh, Hope you guys enjoyed today's episode and stay tuned because we'll be looking at the comparator and we'll start to look at a few more advanced things in redstone So until then, I'll catch you guys next time